Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about spontaneous symmetry breaking in few layer graphene. This is a mechanism which has recently been proposed as a means to explain a somewhat unusual observation about the electronic properties of few layer graphene that seems to result in the production of an unexpected transition to an electrically insulating behavior, in spite of the fact that both the monolayer and the bulk of this material are both known to be great electrical conductors. To see how this can make sense, let's just start with a relatively simple model of monolayer graphene, and then extrapolate to multiple layers later on. To start, remember that graphene is a crystalline material which consists of a whole lot of carbon atoms arranged hexagonally in the plane. If we wanted to come to a sort of basic understanding about the nature of electronic transport on it, then we can consider a simplified toy model consisting of a set of localized valence electrons hopping around their nearest neighboring carbon atoms. In the context of second quantization, the quantum mechanical equations of motion for the electrons in this picture would then be embodied by what's called a Hamiltonian operator, acting as an operator which serves to represent the energy associated with this electronic motion. Diagonalizing this operator would then provide us with a set of eigenvalues that, according to the Schrodinger equation, tell us exactly what the set of allowed quantum energy levels are for these electrons as a function of their momentum. The task in determining whether or not the system is an electrical conductor is then reduced to a task in plotting these energy levels out, generating what's called the band structure of the material, and seeing whether or not there exists an electronic energy gap at any point in the spectrum. I'll attach a brief clip in the description with some details about why this is so. But in a nutshell, the result is really just that if there is an electronic energy gap, it's an insulator. But if there isn't one, it's a conductor. Pretty simple, right? Now, in the particular case of monolayer graphene, this band structure actually ends up looking quite complicated. At the outset, it doesn't seem like there are any gaps, so we can say that it's a conductor. But it can still help to simplify things a little bit so that things are easier to talk about later on. The first thing that we can do is to realize that, like most materials around us, graphene is usually charge neutral, meaning that it has an equal amount of electrons and protons. In the context of its band structure, this means that its electronic energy states are usually filled up with electrons to a very specific point, called the charge neutrality point, about which we can expand and forget about higher and lower energies. Doing this, results in a simplification of the material band structure to a simpler picture, which now involves just six linearly dispersing cones, usually referred to as Dirac cones since they represent the energy-momentum relationship of Dirac particles in quantum field theory. Now, in the particular case of graphene, it actually turns out that three of these six linearly dispersing cones end up being entirely equivalent to each other. Since you can think of graphene's underlying hexagonal lattice as a superposition of two triangular lattices, both shifted with respect to each other. So, this means that we can simplify things even further by just focusing on the only two truly independent cones located at points in momentum space that I'll call the k and the k prime points. Pretty cool. And so it turns out that graphene is in fact an electrical conductor, as expected. But what happens when we go beyond the monolayer and extrapolate to few layer graphene? Well, performing a similar analysis for an arbitrary number of layers can be done, and the result ends up being a straightforward categorization of the material band structure that only depends on the evenness or oddness of the number of layers involved. To be specific, if the number of layers is even, then the band structure at either the k or the k prime point can be represented as a collection of quadratically dispersing bands, each with a different character. Incidentally, the band structure of bilayer graphene is also quadratically dispersing, giving rise to a picture of filayer graphene as nothing more than a collection of a whole lot of bilayer subsystems all stacked on top of each other, at least if the number of layers is even. If the number of layers is odd, then the same picture actually still applies, except that now, we have one additional monolayer subsystem that needs to be accounted for. In the context of the band structure, this really just means that all we need to do is to append one additional linearly dispersing monolayer cone 
on top of all the other quadratically dispersing ones. The result is a pretty quick and easy way of drawing out the bound structure for a few layer graphene that really only depends on the evenness or oddness of the number of layers involved. Pretty cool. But if this is true then, it would seem like graphene is always an electrical conductor, no matter the number of layers involved, since there is never the development of a gap at any point in the spectrum. But then, how do we explain the experiments? Well, if the experiments are true, then the only way around this would be to assume that there's some other physical mechanism, not captured by our simplified toy model, which ultimately ends up being responsible for the observed electrically insulating behavior. For us, since we're dealing with electrically charged particles like electrons, then this means that a good place to start might be with the familiar Coulomb force, acting as a sort of electrostatic force that repels particles of identical charge. In the particular case of few layer graphene, this force does end up being important, and can even be shown to modulate the equations of motion for the electrons in such a drastic way that they end up occupying some layers more densely than others. Ultimately, this gives rise to an electronic density modulation in the direction perpendicular to the layers, breaking inversion symmetry in this direction and modifying the material band structure accordingly. But can this help explain the strange insulating behavior observed in experiments? Well, to answer this, we first need to know exactly how it modifies the band structure, and this can be done by paying careful attention to the symmetries that it breaks. To be specific, I mentioned in passing that this electronic density modulation broke inversion symmetry in the perpendicular direction, but what exactly does this mean? Well, to be clear, Let's first define the inversion operation as that operation which takes the position vector to minus itself. Since momentum has units of mass times position over time, this means that it also takes momentum to minus itself. In the context of graphene's band structure, it's easy to show that the k and the k prime points are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign, meaning that the inversion operation also exchanges these two points. On the other hand, if you were to take a look at graphene's underlying atomic lattice structure, it would also be fairly easy to see that this operation actually doesn't really do anything at all, since all it ends up doing is exchanging identical carbon atoms, bringing the lattice right back to itself. For this reason, graphene is said to respect inversion symmetry, and since the inversion operation also exchanges the k and the k prime points, this forces the bands at these points to look identical. So, what happens when we break this symmetry? Well, in this case, although the inversion operation would of course still exchange the k and the k prime points, the fact that this is no longer a symmetry operation would mean that the bands at these points should no longer look identical, and they would presumably move around in such a way so as to observe this. In fact, according to experiments done on monolayer graphene, which explicitly break inversion symmetry by applying a potential energy difference across neighboring atoms, the result ends up being not only a shifting of the bands, but also the consequent opening of an electronic energy gap around charge neutrality, potentially providing us with exactly what we need in order to explain the strange insulating behavior observed in experiments. Cool beans. But we do need to be a bit careful here, because for us, the specific pattern of the electronic density modulation only ended up breaking inversion symmetry in the direction perpendicular to the layers, but not within any given layer. If we were to push the analogy of few layer graphene as being a collection of mono and bilayer subsystems, then since only the bilayer systems actually have a finite extension in this direction, this means that only these bilayer subsystems actually see the full effects of the inversion symmetry breaking. Experimentally, this would suggest a sort of even-odd effect in few layer graphene where only those systems with an even number of layers are observed to be electrically insulating, or equivalently, fully gapped, while those with an odd number of layers always maintain one residual monolayer Dirac cone, unscathed by inversion symmetry breaking, in order to provide the necessary means for electrical conduction. And what do you know? This even out effect from this specific form of inversion symmetry breaking is exactly what was observed in suspended few layer graphene devices 
probed via electrical transport. Pretty cool. And so it would seem that the inclusion of electronic interactions, moderated in this case by the Coulomb force, provides us with what we need in order to explain the insulating behavior observed in experiments. And this is pretty awesome because it highlights a deviation from the naive expectation that adding additional conducting layers will still give you a conductor. Ultimately, it underscores the importance of coming to a detailed understanding about the subtle nature of electronic interactions in everyday materials, even in something as seemingly simple and renowned as few layer graphene. Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you found this as cool as I did, let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys next time, ciao!